India and Australia have seen high-level visits, the visit of the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to Australia and the Australian Prime Minister visiting India two times. Uh, this relationship has many aspects, whether it's cricket or diaspora. With me is the Deputy Prime Minister of Australia and the Defence Minister Richard Mars to speak about this relationship and starting with cricket first congratulations for that victory we saw the visuals you handing over the cricket world cup to your team so what was the sense there the electrifying moment we saw um, the entire country saw and across the world we saw how your uh, cricket team uh, saw that amazing victory well, it was an incredible experience. It was an extraordinary experience for me. I wasn't expecting to, to do that. Uh, but, I mean, the, the team played an amazing game on just the most extraordinary stage. Uh, this is the largest cricket ground in the world, completely full. I've never heard noise like it. Those first few Australian wickets where we were getting a bit nervous there, uh, the noise of the crowd was astounding. And actually, I, I spoke to the Australian cricketers afterwards in the dressing room about whether that was something they had heard before. But what's really clear is that uh, for Australian cricket now, India is so familiar. All the players play here in the IPL. They all said they've heard noise like that in various IPL games. Actually, it's, a, it, it's, it's their second home in so many ways. And I think that that does speak to, through cricket, how the relationship between our two countries has grown so significantly. And cricket, in many senses, has become very symbolic of India-Australia relationship. In fact, the Indian cricket team from newly independent India visited uh, Australia in 1947-48 as well. They did. And uh, Bradman was the captain in that tour. Um, my father uh, saw Bradman play once, and it was in that tour against India. Um, and it was you know, a very iconic moment. And since then, Indian tours of Australia have been significant. I, my, I first remember watching India play in 77, 78, uh, and Bisham Beatty, who sadly just passed away, was the captain in that tour. It was a great series. Um, but I think now, you know, for uh, as global cricket has become centred on, on India, um, for us, um, Everest really is beating India in India. Um, and the Australian India matches are becoming uh, really the, the, the pinnacle of the game. We obviously, uh, Australia, England has a lot of tradition, but, but I think increasingly we see uh, matches and series against India as being, as being the really significant moment. And you're right that it, it really is emblematic of the, the relationship. Um, you can, you know, we share a passion um, as two countries for this sport. Mm -hmm. uh, and we obviously have a very significant relationship with the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can't have a conversation with a taxi driver in Washington or New York, which is the same as the, the conversation you'll have with a taxi driver here in Delhi, mm -hmm. um, where you feel passionately about the topic. Um, and it, 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 you know, it, it binds us very closely together. Mm -hmm. uh Talking about this relationship, yes, cricket diplomacy is one of the elements and our team also played very well. Uh, but essentially, how do you characterize this relationship? Uh, we saw the uh, Defence Strategic Review talking about increasing engagement with India. So what kind of engagement you're looking at, especially in terms of training, in terms of Indian participation in Australian exercises? Well, perhaps to, to go back a step and, and, and think about it at, at the highest level. we see that we have a huge strategic alignment with India and we have shared values with India. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, for both Australia and India, our largest trading partner is China. Mm -hmm. um, our biggest security anxiety is China. So, so we share something very similar. We share an ocean and, and in that sense, we live in the same neighbourhood, but we also share values. Mm -hmm. you know, we're both democracies. Uh, we both have freedom of speech, the rule of law, a whole lot of things in common, very much including cricket. Mm -hmm. Um, and you put all that together and what becomes really clear is that from our perspective and I, and I think and hope from the Indian perspective as well, um, the significance of this relationship going forward off a very strong base um, is hugely important for us. Um, and and defence is a key component of that. So we are seeing a, a much greater tempo of, of exercises. 
Um, we've seen Malabar for the first time happen in Australian waters um, and uh, I was able to uh, meet Indian Admirals uh, on Sydney Harbour uh, this year. Um, uh, exercise Oz Index, uh, Exercise Ostrahin, all happening this year. Observers at Exercise Talisman Sabre in Australia. So you've got a really um, significant tempo of exercises and this is building a familiarity, um, an interoperability between our defence forces, um, a, a comfort, and again, off a very strong base, which I think does underpin um, the significance of the relationship. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned about strategic alignment. Increasingly, both countries look each other as security partners. In fact, uh, uh, there's so much comfort that you were on board Indian Navy's P-8 uh, uh, aircraft as well. Yes, uh, so which was a thrill for me last year. So th this is one of the, coming to India was one of the first uh, bilateral visits that I did in my role as Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister and had the um, enormous uh, honour of being on an uh, Indian Navy P-8 flying from Goa uh, to, to Delhi. And, you know, P-8s are sensitive platforms. I mean, they literally um, uh, surveil and acquire intelligence and, and information. Um, and indeed, we are seeing a much greater interoperability between our P-8s, the P-8s in the Australian Air Force and the P-8s in the Indian Navy. And there's so much that we can do there together. Um, but it, 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 it speaks to the comfort, uh, the trust um, and the... I think the, the, the joint deterrence which comes from seeing Australia and India working closely together and that is something which is very much in both countries' interests. Mm. So you mentioned about uh, the uh, military interoperability and there's a logistical pact as well signed in 2020. Mm. So any update on that and how both countries are moving towards this convergence? Well, the, the, the logistical agreement that we signed in 2020 has been really important. I think actually the, the, the significance of it is that it has enabled the increased tempo of uh, exercises that we've been able to undertake this year and, and we, we hope will, will continue going forward. So underpinning all of those exercises has been this logistics arrangement which has enabled uh, platforms and support to be able to put, be put in place so those exercises can occur. But we've also seen it um, play a part in humanitarian assistance. Uh, for example, uh, last year, at the beginning of last year, we saw, uh, I think last year or the year before, the, the tsunami in Tonga, mm -hmm. um, and we were able to uh, take Indian humanitarian assistance to Tonga mm -hmm. um, on board our platforms. And again, that, that logistics agreement was a critical part of that. And the power, I mean, the diplomatic power, but you know, the assistance, which comes from um, Australia and India being seen to work together in that instance to provide assistance to a Pacific nation like Tonga, um, is, is really, really significant and greatly appreciated. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned about the Pacific. Uh, how do both the countries plan to increase their engagement in the Pacific together? I'm asking this because the Indian Prime Minister was uh, in Papua New Guinea. We have seen increased Indian engagement. Mm -hmm. And how do you see under the leadership of both the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Albanese and the Indian Prime Minister, relationship going towards a further upgrade? Well, to do with the Pacific, firstly, uh, we really welcomed the visit of Prime Minister Modi to uh, Papua New Guinea, which occurred just prior to him coming to Australia. Um, and uh, Papua New Guinea is a country I've been to many times and know well, and I can tell you the significance having, of having uh, Prime Minister Modi, having the Indian Prime Minister in Port Moresby was absolutely enormous. Uh, and we very much welcome um, an increased Indian presence in the Pacific. Um, Dr Jai Shankar, the Foreign Minister, has also been, um, uh, was in Fiji uh, last year, I think, um, as uh, part of um, the, the, the World Indian Diaspora um, uh, event. And, um, but again, that was a really significant moment for Fiji to have uh, Dr Jai Shankar there. So we are seeing an increased Indian presence in the region. Um, and it is really important. Uh, we, you know, we need to, the Pacific is an area of greater strategic contest. Mm -hmm. um, countries like ours, which share values um, of democracy, but importantly, a commitment to the global rules-based order, having a greater presence together um, in the Pacific is, is from our perspective very welcome, but I know is also very welcome by the countries of the Pacific. I, I think to your other question, um, firstly, Prime Minister 
Albanese and Prime Minister Modi have formed a strong relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the real honour last night of being able to sit with Prime Minister Modi um, for some of the, the match. Um, and you know, it's uh, incredible to see the reaction of the Indian crowd to Prime Minister Modi. Um, we at one moment took a selfie. The first thing Prime Minister Modi said to me is, you have to send that to your Prime Minister right now. I did. It was in the middle of the night. I got a response straight away. So I can tell you that our Prime Minister was watching the game, albeit at two or three in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, and he wanted me to pass on his, um, his regards to Prime Minister Modi. So they have a very close relationship. Um, and I think what that speaks to in a personal way is what we've been saying, how important uh, this relationship is going forward. And we haven't talked about the Indian diaspora in Australia, but that's also a, a, a huge element, I think, now of the relationship. It, it is a, um, a growing community in Australia, probably the fastest growing community in Australia. It is, uh, in many ways, I think, changing the face of Australia in a really wonderful way. Um, it's not going to be long before we have people of Indian heritage playing in the Australian cricket team. Mm -hmm. um, we look forward to that day. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and so, but, but, but that community really, well, it actually transforms the relationship between our two countries as one of close friends to actually being one of family. Mm -hmm. uh, so several aspects now moving from the Pacific to the Indian Ocean. How do you see the situation in the Indian Ocean? Because this is an ocean you share with mm. India as well. And has the Indian side offered you to do exercises around the Andaman um, Islands? Well, we do see the Indian Ocean as being um, more contested. Um, it is obviously very important to us. Um, our defence strategic review that we uh, we announced in April of this year identified the Indian Ocean and specifically the northeast part of the Indian Ocean as being critically strategic to Australia's security and to our national interests. Um, but we do see it being increasingly contested. Um, and so we want to work very closely with India um, in relation to the Indian Ocean. It is where we are neighbours. Uh, I think what we will see coming out of our engagements with our Indian counterparts uh, in our meetings today is a, an increased focus on how we can work more closely together in the Indian Ocean. Uh, we already have a liaison officer in the Fusion Centre just outside of Delhi here, which is really important for us. Uh, but I think particularly with maritime domain awareness, uh, sharing of information where we're working closely together, uh, we are doing more with our P8s as I, as I said earlier. Mm -hmm. I mean all of this paints a picture of an increased engagement between our two countries in the Indian Ocean and I actually think that is where we give rise to the greatest power of deterrence when you know the, the world can see Australia and India working so closely together in the Indian Ocean. Mm -hmm. And China remains a big worry, whether it's the Indian Ocean, whether it's the Pacific Ocean, the entire Indo-Pacific region. What's your view about an increasingly aggressive China, whether it's with India, whether it's with Philippines, or whether it's with you? We saw your reaction over uh, the actions by the Chinese vessel. So if you can talk about the Chinese aggressive actions in the region. Well, we have had the incident uh, over the course of uh, the last week uh, with HMAS Toowoomba, where uh, we did have Australian divers who were in the water that our, our, our ship had had some fishing nets tangled around its uh, propellers that was being shadowed by um, a Chinese vessel. We made clear to the Chinese vessel that our divers were in the water fixing the propellers, but um, there was um, behaviour there which was assertive um, and, and aggressive and, and it did um, we, in our view, uh, equate to being unprofessional. We've, we've made our concerns known to China. It's not the first time that we've seen an incident of this kind, uh, and it is concerning because, you know, our engagement in South China Sea, East China Sea, in, in, this, in, in that part of the world is around asserting the rules based order, um, freedom of navigation. And that matters to Australia's national interest. I mean, most of our trade, literally most of it, goes through the South China Sea. Um, and seeing the rules-based order be maintained is profoundly important for us. I think you know, we are seeing a Chinese assertiveness, as you say. Uh, we're seeing a huge uh, military build-up by China. Um, and, and all of this is changing the strategic landscape of our region and the world. Uh, but of course, you know, the, the, the country which has really borne 
the, the, the brunt of this, who has experienced the most of it, is India, mm -hmm. around the line of actual control. Um, and so be it there, be it in uh, the South China Sea, we, we, we are seeing um, attempts to you know, shape the rules-based order. And what this says to us is that um, you know, now is a time to be building our own capability, which we're doing, but now is a time for us to be working very closely with, with, with friends and, and India is front and centre in that. Mm -hmm. um, Sir, Quad uh, is a grouping where India and Australia have been working together. India is going to hold the Quad Summit next uh, year. Are you looking at any defence angle in the Quad? And the second is, uh, are you looking at expansion of this grouping? Do you think this is a good idea? Uh, well, I th well, firstly, I think the Quad is the Quad. Um, and so we're very comfortable with the four countries. Uh, operating together and we think there is a natural alignment between our four countries um, and building that and, and increasing our cooperation across a whole lot of spheres we are committed to doing. So uh, there's no um, uh, talk of, of, of changing the membership of the Quad. Um, it's not a, a defence um, it's, it, it's not a piece of defence architecture, um, and, and, and so and we don't intend for it to become that. Um, this is a, a countries engaging with each other around a range of um, mutual interests beyond the sphere of defence, and we're very comfortable with that as well. So we, we see um, the Quad as being an important um, uh, meeting of countries with shared values. Um, with, with, with shared interests, uh, working together, not in the defence sphere, but working together in other spheres. And we, we, are, we, we highly value it, but we're very comfortable with where it's at at the moment. My last question, AUKUS and India engagement, are you looking at? Uh, look, um, so, so pillar two of AUKUS, which um, is looking at sharing greater technologies, innovation technologies. We, the, I think the three countries, Australia, the US and the UK, are uh, open-minded to the idea of expanding that cooperation, but to be to begin with, we we've got to get that part of um, AUKUS, AUKUS Pillar Two, going um, in a more significant way, and so we're very focused on giving it meaning, if I could put it that way, within our three countries first. Um, but I would, you know, f fundamentally, be it the Australia acquiring a nuclear-powered submarine capability under Pillar One or Pillar Two. What AUKUS is is a technology um, sharing arrangement between the US, the UK, and Australia. In terms of Australia and India, we are increasing our technology sharing as well. I mean, again, in our engagements today, we'll be talking more about um, expanding the cooperation between our respective defence science organisations. Uh, we are seeing a greater engagement between our defence industry. Um, and so that, the, the, that, that technology sharing aspect, which, which is at the heart of all, because we're seeing happen between Australia and India anyway. Mm. Well, thank you so much, sir, for speaking to Vion. It's lovely to have you here in India at a time when your uh, cricket team has won the World Cup, but we also played very well. Thank you, you so much, sir. You did play very well, and it's an enormous honour to be here and, and a great privilege to be at the game last night. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir.